Hello my soccer universe, welcome to the Serie A and Coppa Italia review. Yes, I waited a little bit with the Serie A review because I wanted to get the Coppa Italia in. Not that it brought me a whole lot of joy because we have now, albeit a great final, but not the final that I was hoping for. I actually was hoping for the exact opposite of that one, but you know. Uh, that was always a little bit of a fool's hope to be honest. Yeah, uh, overall Serie A, Serie A, I think... At this very, very moment, we can say it's now a two-way race. I think Napoli, more or less, with a late equalizer by Roma, got out of the title race. Was actually that was the two to, to me of all the games that we're talking. That was actually being on Napoli, Roma, the Derby della Sole, where um, the draw helped neither of the teams, but it helped a lot uh, the Milan clubs and, of course, Juventus as well in their pursuit for. Um, the title and Champions League respectively and I am wearing Verona because that's another one of those teams that have been performing had a pretty good good, good performance winning 2-1 at Atalanta you know Atalanta taking a little bit of a nose dive I'm not sure if it's a sign of things to come for the future but this season is a really 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 tough one for Atalanta I think they have taken meanwhile too many losses Let's get into it. I mean, it's a weird weekend because we had Easter. There was the Sunday uh, was taken out. So it was kind of a disjoint joint affair. I have to say uh, Friday evening, I was all set to watch Milan. And then I said, nah, I've been so frustrated with watching them uh, for so many uh, times already that uh, since my daughter wanted to actually have a family movie evening, uh, I said, let's go for that one. It will be way more enjoyable than watching again uh, Milan go into on on another folly of a <laughs> you know uh, a, a failed pursuit in search of a goal, which is something that has, you know Milan have been really 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 frustrating. But that's uh, last week's video. I think I illustrated that. Uh, it already started out not so great because Inter took the win at Spezia, putting Milan actually a little bit under, under pressure, but maybe that's exactly what they needed because they come out against Genoa. It was not a great performance, but at least they get the early goal through Leao after a nice Kalule assist. And yeah, um, Gabia starts, I think, I think Calabria wasn't playing, so uh, Gabia starts starting center, Kalulu moving in his natural position. Suddenly he unleashes a really nice cross that Leao can put home against the Genoa team that really was not threatening. Again, you have to finish the job. It took them a whole lot of time to get the same goal, but hey, at least two goals. This is a whole lot more than I was expecting sooner. And the defense still being solid. Um, Junior Messias uh, base, 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 does an an attack late, late, later on. Again, um, I think finishing is still an issue for Milan. It's also an issue with uh, injuries, depleted squad. I think Slatan looks like he's not going to play for Milan again. I don't, I don't know. But yeah, um, they are technically still in the title race. But for me, it's at the moment a little bit the rot is setting in. in this, and I have my doubts whether Milan really can continue to be in this particular title race uh, or if it's not going to fall apart relatively soon although Champions League qual qualification looks rather secure so at least that is happening uh, pretty remarkable result by Salernitana 2-1 over some I actually saw a little a little bit of that I mean I had my brother we were visiting it was not uh, not anything else uh, on that I wanted, I wanted to put on Salernitana getting two very early goals. Salernitana, the big winners over this entire period since my last video. Uh, Sampdoria can pull one back but never find an equalizer. Udine do 4-1 over M M Empoli. At that point, I really thought that Udine at the moment is a really, really uh, annoying team and I have were really on a good run scoring many, many goals. Fiorentina put more trouble into Venezia, although I think Fiorentina at that point were more or less looking... Uh, into uh, uh, saving their pebbles for the cup match. Fiorentina also, um, you know, uh, changing their logo in, the, in this past few, few, few days. But that's a discussion. I have a whole discussion. Uh, I have a whole in um, another chat with a fellow called Kolek where we discuss all that rebranding. Speaking of rebranded teams with uh, Juventus, of course, that game was remarkable in the sense that Bologna probably should have deserved that win. Bologna were the better team. It was remarkable because of the uh, special Juve jerseys. 
didn't look like a Yuba Georgia uh, jersey at all. It re definitely looks like a m uh, m mural or whatever, but I am not sure if it's a great jersey all overall, but that gave me a reason to put up my new blue Yuba shirt back there. So yeah, two Yuba shirts up, 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 up there because, you know, the Coppa Italia ties, of course, right here. But yeah, uh, Arnautovic gave Bologna the lead. And Bologna seemed like they're hanging on, uh, but then they get uh, a, a, a red card for a last man foul, and then Medel is getting so furious that he gets himself sent off with two yellow cards in quick succession. If there's only one yellow card given, I think Bologna can very well hold out for that draw. But other than that, it was clear that Juve is going to score, and they score late. I think it was a bicycle kick by Morata in the 95th minute that Vlahovic then heads home. But yeah, uh, you were not looking good at all. And that it, it is my, my bad uh, season where to get another title seems a little bit galling. Uh, Lazio also only won one against Torino. Yeah, but Torino is a good team. Uh, we also have, have to say. But um, it was all about Napoli-Roma, as, as I said. A game definitely of two halves. First half, all Napoli. Second half, more or less all Roma. Napoli get the goal through a penalty that, yeah, uh, if you look at it, it was to me a clear penalty, although as much, I don't deny. I wanted the Roma to get something from this one, not only because I like Roma slightly more than Na Napoli, but also, you know, the less competition for the Scudetto, the better. On the other side, I always said, if Milan is not going to win this Scudetto, uh, let's beat Napoli. Well, <laughs> pick and choose didn't work out didn't work out in any, in any in, in, in any way because it seems like Inter, but we'll talk about that. Uh, Napoli really, full house, of course. Uh, with that uh, lead, I really thought that nah, Napoli going to tear apart Roma at the moment. Insigne, of course, uh, giving the penalty. However, you saw it in the build-up. Zaniolo sometimes missing a last pass or over there. And Roma coming off this uh, tie against Bode Klimt as well. So maybe not the freshest legs there too. However, it all changed in, in the second half. I mean, the second half started kind of messy. And then the longer it was, the more Roma got into the game. And um, I think the uh, bringing on El Sharavi was definitely uh, the masterstroke there. I think he got even on a little a little bit too late. Uh, the only scare was that uh, Zaniolo had to come off. El Sharavi came on for him. Uh, with an in in injury, non-contact injury there. So uh, you are a, a little bit worried because Zaniolo, you know, already having two crucial ligaments. Uh, sir, sir, just lately he, he doesn't look as, um, you know, as explosive as he used to be. He's still a highly, highly talented player who still could deliver, but I'm worried about him and injuries at this moment in time. And they get the deserved equalizer nine in the nine in the first minute, just when I thought that Napoli might hang on, but I think it would not have been deserved. And I gotta say, with that equalizer, I think all the hopes for the Scudetto for Napoli poof, vanished. It is at the moment four points behind Milan. If Inter win their game in hand, it's five points behind with five games to go. Doesn't look good. It needs a miracle, and I have to say, there is a certain weakness within Napoli uh, to not get the title over the line. Because, let's face it, this Napoli squad, over the past five, six years, they should have won at least one of those titles. They were good enough, especially the Sarri team uh, that lost it in the hotel uh, once they had beaten Juve, and then Juve wins at Inter, and suddenly uh, they completely lose to Nervin Fiorentina rolls over, over, over them as i said atalanta i have my doubts that I, I i really hope this is not the end of the story i it definitely has to be said that atalanta have lost many players and i'm speaking especially papa gongomas and robin gosens uh who parted in anger um the game did not go atalanta's way Ceccarini just before the half and then an on for Corp Miners uh, already pulling the uh, game squarely into uh, Verona's 
uh, away and only a late Scalvini goal uh, gave them a little bit hope. But honestly, Atalanta look, look flat. Yes, also coming back from the Europa League uh, defeat against Leipzig, which cost them a whole lot. Now, uh, we also had a makeup game uh, where Salinitana gets a second win in a row. Is there hope? At Udine, something I did not expect to happen, like at all. That was a really, really shocker of a result. And with that, uh, as I said, the table at the moment is still Milan up top, but Inter have that game against Bologna in hand, although I'm very happy that at this moment, Bologna seems to be a op uh, much uh, tougher opposition than uh, it seemed to be when the game was scheduled to play. Fairness, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But you see uh, already the Napoli's chances are down to 5%, Inter now 77%. Winning uh, favors to the to, to, to title, I only at this moment, also the way Milan are trending, I cannot see Inter, uh, I cannot see anyone but Inter winning this title, which hurts a teeny little bit. But, you know, on the, on the bottom, as I said, Salernitana, now only 90%, they were 98%. Is there hope all the ones at 22, all are six behind? The spot that Cagliari now has that uh, would that would be the last safe safe spot. I still think that the three down are the three going down. Uh, to be fair, uh, Roma with a win, they probably could have uh, entered the uh, conversation for the Champions League spots. But as it stands, it seems rather unlikely that Roma will get in the same to Lazio, Fiorentina, who at the moment seem to be the team that take the European spots. To be honest, so uh, that I found quite interesting uh too and then um upcoming games sorry we have the big uh milan versus rome duel which we had already the coppa italia we can get to the coppa italia uh in a sec where inter host roma and milan have to go to La lazio i think that weekend could very well be the one where we see whether um how the title race will, will be going actually think that uh, Roma might be the last stiff test for Inter on their way to, to, to the title. If Roma get a point of Inter, and if then Milan could pull a, a win at Lazio, a Lazio team that is not that great, we might still have a title race. But it's really for me the last, almost the last straw that one. I want to see if Salernitana can continue the form against uh, Fiorentina and Sassuolo Juve. There's always a little bit, although, you know, could be that Juve is doing something, but uh, uh, given that Roma have to, uh, have to play Inter, it's more likely like that Juve solidify the fourth space uh, and Napoli definitely need to get something at Empoli. Before we to get to the Coppa Italia, also quick on the Milan takeover uh, by Invest Corp. I am holding my breath at the moment for the simple reason that, you know, it goes from one uh, investment fund to another. I think that Milan is sold for such a big price speaks very well. I think it shows that the project is very solid financially. It makes money, so there's interest there, unlike other teams in Italy. So for me, uh, again, the future seems to be bright for Milan on uh, uh, that the club is solid. Uh, and that turnaround is such a short term. I mean, this was it, it was only four years ago that Milan really seemed on the brink, but they really have done, they have actually reduced the budget and got a better team out, out, out of it. So from a team building perspective, I'm actually positive. So at the moment, I have a little bit of negative uh, taste when watching Milan, but overall, I think the future for Milan is bright. Um, I think it also speaks, I think they're, attracted by the prospect of having a stadium and maybe even building it by themselves which is something that i would actually support because uh let's face it inter is in financial dire straits they may win another title and they may get champions league money blah 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 have the better team at, at the moment but financially i think that the, the club is in a whole heap of trouble and they're dragging milan back i think milan should go alone uh with the stadium project to be honest Speaking of Inter v Milan, yeah, this was the big uh, derby in the Coppa Italia. A derby that, again, I decided I'd rather watch Liverpool and Man United and the German Cup because I foresaw, foresaw in a little bit. And Milan will not have much chance against Inter. And so it proved to it, although I have to say, if Milan were just a teeny bit more clinically, they could have made this a proper game. And if the ref... Uh, does not pull out an offside out of nowhere. 
I know, but I let off the law. You can say that I think it was Kalulu was offside, but Handanovic was never gonna get to that one. But yeah, first things first. Uh, the one thing that Milan was really hoping for is that they will uh, get something out of this one. Is that a draw, a scoring, a scoring draw uh, would have been enough. And you know, with Milan actually having a very solid defense. One would hope again. Well, those hopes were gone after 4 4 for me. It's after Darmian across and uh, Lataro did with an uh, absolute scorch of a volley, puts it home. 1 0. Inter Milan was rattled for about 20, 20, 20, 20 minutes, but then I have to say for the last at least 20, 25 five minutes, Milan, Milan really uh, were good. Created chances that you just have to put away. Uh, sometimes they a little, it was a little bit more ca trying to carry the ball into, into the goal. There was always the threat that Inter are going to score from a counter attack, which is exactly what they did when Correa plays a brilliant pass to Martinez in the 40th minute. Martin uh, Lattaro puts it home 2-0 at a moment where Milan were really on top of that game. They controlled it, they bossed it, but they, uh, as I, I think Saki and I, I said it and... While Saki doesn't say many good things any, anymore, the one thing is that Inter looked a little bit more cohesive as a team, where uh, Milan looks disjointed in many ways. So yeah, uh, then again, for about 20 or 20, 20 minutes, in Milan try to get into the game, try to get back into the game. They need two, two goals. They score a goal through Benazer in the 66th. Lifeline. Inter were uh, saying handball was never handball, and then the VAR says the Inter players were under. And Danovic wasn't even complaining that, 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 that he didn't see the ball because he would never have gotten there in, in any way. But then that offside, yeah, killed the game and then lay it on. Uh, it's a third goal uh, through Gosens, settles the game. I think a 3 0 is not representative. I think it was a 2 1 win for Inter. I think this was representative of the game. The 3 0 is a little bit too harsh. Um, Juve, I think Fiorentina try, but honestly, um, I shouldn't say Juve, I should say Fiorentina North dispose of the parent club. Bernadeschi, former Fiorentina captain, uh, scores the 1 0 uh, after a period where I think Fiorentina tried to get something. My eyes were honestly more on Chelsea v Arsenal, which is so weird, but you know. Uh, in many, in, in many ways, uh, you were always right trying to get the second one with that goal. It was a, always a tough task for Fiorentina to come back, and so we have a Juve Inter Cup final. Will I watch it? Yes, because it's very enticing. Those two old rivals get, uh, going against each other. I really hope that this comes also at, at, at a time that it will take a lot of strength out of Inter, and maybe give me a little bit short in the arm. But just from my argu our argumentation, your your EC, I don't see much hope for Milan winning the Serie A title at this moment but I really hope that I will be wrong so let's see anyway let me know your thoughts on the state of affairs in Italy give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon <laughs> bye hey there I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too also please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.